Hello, this is Tracy Irvine with livingfreelife.com. Uh, and so I don't know if you found me from my website or if it's my personal YouTube channel, channel Facebook, how you found me. Uh, but um, I wanted to share with you um, today uh, some insights that uh, about life that came to me while I was reading in Exodus this morning. I was um, reading... Uh, the passages uh, about almost even if you've never gone to church, you've probably heard about um, God delivering the Israelites out of Egypt, you know, uh, of Moses going to Pharaoh saying, let my people go. And then they cross on dry land uh, and take over the promised land eventually. Uh, so anyway, I'm reading this today. And I'm seeing over and over again, and excuse my glasses, I'm wearing glasses today, uh, getting the light. But I'm seeing over and over again that um, God's orchestrating the big picture, that it, it wasn't just about right then, it was about preparing the Israelites' hearts for the future and our hearts for the future, uh, um, and just the big picture. But how often in life we screw up our life because it's all about me. You know, all we see is the pain that we feel or the pain that we're trying to avoid. And so it's, it's God, please don't let this happen. And God, please protect us here. And, and it's good that we pray. God says to pray, to put our requests before him. He even says pray over and over and over again the same prayers, begging him for as long as it takes. So God doesn't have a problem with us coming. In fact, he says it's a good thing to continue to put your request before God. But we don't do that believing that he's our little genie and that if we keep rubbing the, the bottle by praying and praying, that um, that means that he's supposed to make it happen the way we imagine it should happen. Because God's purpose is to bring glory to him, to cause people to look to him. And this all started with the Garden of Eden, you know? I mean, he wanted to, to be their comforter. He wanted to be their father. He wanted to be their all in all. I mean, he is the one who created us and the earth. So he, he deserves glory and honor. Now, he did give us free will, so things happen because I have free will and you have free will, and the person texting and driving and may come into a lane and kill your son or cause you to have an injury or be paralyzed or whatever it may be. Our free will definitely messes up each other's lives, but God has an overall purpose that even though our free will messes up each other's lives, his will be done. He, he has a way, um, and he promises uh, to work all things together for good for those that love him and are called according to his purpose. And so we need to close our eyes and say, God, help me see your perspective in this situation when these things happen. So let's um, bring it back to uh, Egypt. So Moses keeps going to Pharaoh. And in the beginning, the Israelites, because their perspective is me, 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 uh, just like we are. I mean, I'm the same way, not looking down on the Israelites, because I be them, <laughs> you know, in, in many ways. But uh, because all they could see is themselves, they're like, Moses, you're a crazy man. Look what you're doing. Now we're not escaping. Instead, you just made it harder on us. Now we don't have... Uh, straw to make bricks. You know, we have to go collect our own. We still have to do as many. So everything became worse in the beginning. All they could see is that it's worse. Everything's worse for me. But God had a big picture. He said in the beginning, I'm going to harden Pharaoh's heart. And he keeps hardening Pharaoh's heart. And he says, each time when he says that, to, to so that he will know, so the Egyptians will know that I'm God, or he will know my power, or whatever. He's trying to get everyone to look to him and to, to honor and recognize he's in charge, that he has the power to do whatever, you know. And uh, he's even trying to help Moses have belief and power, you know, because Moses is like, no, not me, please, anyone but me. I, I don't I don't talk well or whatever. And God's trying to help everyone see that he's there to take care of them. He has the power. They just need to trust him. And so in the long run, when they're about to finally get released, uh, he I think it's um, Exodus 14, 4, he says, I will make Pharaoh brave when you leave, and he will chase you. But I will defeat Pharaoh and his army. This will bring honor to me, God. And then the people of Egypt will know that I am the Lord. So the Israelites did what he told them. 
So again, it was all to that. But I, you really see later that it's not just so that Egypt will know that he's Lord. It's so that the Israelites will know that he's Lord. Right? I mean, can you imagine them crossing over on dry land in the night, walls of water on either side, um, that they wouldn't be worried the walls would fall down on them and some would just hang out on the, on the beach on the other side? if it weren't for that they had already seen all the plagues and how God didn't allow the plagues to be where the Israelites were. He, they only happened where the Egyptians were. Three days of darkness on the Egyptian, where the Egyptians were living and the Israelites are in, in daylight. You know, locust and all these things happening over where the Egyptians are and yet in the houses of the Israelites, none. That just doesn't happen, you know. So he's increasing the faith of, of the Israelites so that they can cross on dry land. But because we're humans, even though God did this miraculous thing, still when pain comes our way, because we don't like pain, uh, we still go, oh no, is God going to do it this time? Maybe not, because for some reason, the sin from the Garden of Eden where they didn't trust that God had their best interest at heart, still follows us to this day and it's all about us you know oh lord let me go through life with no pain let i want you to be my genie in a bottle that everything i ask happen for my good you know but yet we need to recognize that god has an overall plan and when other people's sin affects us or maybe my actions affect me maybe because i for years thought i was eating healthy but really i was eating meat and oil and it cause plaque in my veins and I end up needing bypass surgery you know I don't think that'll happen because now I'm not but let's just say I didn't I hadn't learned that all of that was causing plaque and I had bypass surgery that's not God's fault I ate that way you know I got cancer well who's the one that drank from bottles you know that have been sitting in heat and the plastic and stuff got inside the water or putting on chemicals on my face trying not to get wrinkles or eating things with all the chemicals, whatever it is, it's not God's fault, <laughs> you know? Uh, so no matter what it is, uh, it's how can this, how will this bring glory to God? If we just get our minds off ourselves and, you know, release and let go. If you follow me on Living a Free Life, you know, I have techniques that help you change your perspective of past experiences, your fears of the future, and things like that. So yes, all of that is valuable, but the overall purpose of life, of all life, is bringing glory to God. So how is God's glory going to come out of this? And uh, sometimes you don't see it in the moment, sometimes it's years later that you're telling your story and it encourages somebody that God is the God of the universe and encourages them to be the hand of God to somebody else by meeting a need or whatever it may be. But it's all about God. It's not all about me. Uh, and one quick last little thing, you know, recently, um, or many times, and you can pro I'm sure that you can, uh, if you're a, a God follower, you've had things that you just were sure God was encouraging you to do something, and then it just seems like it's a disaster, and you think, how can this be? Uh, I'm planning on going overseas, and I find myself, and I'm still going to pray it, because again, God does say to pray, you know, God, don't let me get sick, you know, let me, uh, let let me stay healthy and all those kind of things because I don't want pain. But at the same time, I need to recognize that if I do get sick, if does something does happen, let's say I break my leg or I lose my glasses and I'm blind the whole time or whatever it may be, that my perspective needs to not be all about me. Yes, I can still pray and ask for my needs to be met, for what I think are my needs, but it's all about God's glory. So in that time, uh, is my maybe the the person that's ministering to me, or maybe somebody else gets sick, and maybe it's me needing to uh, be loving to them. It's what is the overall picture? What's going to bring glory to God? How will this circumstance? be an example to others to cause them to look to heaven and recognize God. So whether it's a good thing, you know, yay, um, I had this bubble on my tire and it didn't, you know, give God the glory. Well, yes, we want to say that, but we need to be sensitive. Who else might, you know, to a situation that 
God might recall that to our minds and we go, I need to share this situation because that will bring glory to God and it will help this person look to God and believe. You know, so anyway, it's just, it's all about God and His glory, not about me. Uh, and that's what I learned today uh, in reading through this, that sometimes God hardens people's hearts, sometimes He causes them to be brave, so those prayers are valid prayers when we want to pray, oh Lord, you know, soften their heart or whatever it may be, those are valid. But when He's not our genie in the bottle, when things aren't happening the way we prayed that they would happen, we need to just say, God, I believe that you work all things together for good for those who love you and are called according to the, your purpose. So, Lord, I know that it's not all about me and that it's, you know, you have a whole purpose in all of this. Not that you cause the situation, not that you cause that person to text and drive or, you know, cause that person to have evil thoughts and, and injure me or whatever it may be. No, he allows free will, so things happen. But he has an overall plan that he can work all things together for good. And um, so, Lord, give me your perspective in this. That's the prayer to pray. So that's it, folks. Um, Tracy Irvine, livingfreelife.com. If... Um, you need uh, help, I have a contact button, and I would more than happy to help you understand that God is a loving God, uh, help you reframe your perspectives, just hit the contact button, write me, um, I, will, I will always answer you. So that's it. Blessings. Bye-bye.